Hey guys, wanted to do a folding knife review video for you today. Uh, this is, as you can see, on a Columbia River Knife and Tool product uh, designed by Kit Carson. Uh, this is the M16. Um, of course, they make many different versions of the M16 slash M21. Uh, this one in particular uh, is the M16-04Z if you're north of the border, 04Z if you're in the United States. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's open it up. Uh, this knife has, as you can see, is brand new. Uh, it's only been out of the box once to uh, adjust the pocket clip. They usually come tip down. Um, I always switch them to tip up. Uh, this one's on loan from a friend of mine who has a couple of them. He has one that uh, he always keeps brand new as a backup because he likes them so much, which is uh, speaks to the knife, I would say. Um, so of course, this has the auto locks feature. And comes with a little mini catalog. Plenty of uh, different items in here. There's uh, Nathan's knife, a little wood knife. Uh, I actually picked that up for my son uh, a couple years back. Somewhere in here. Here we go. There are the Kit Carson designed M21 and M16s. Now, I can tell you that I don't know off the top of my head what the difference between an M16 and an M21 is when it comes to these blades. I have had both and uh, I've owned several of these myself. Uh, like I said, this one here has not been used, uh, it's brand new. Uh, I could have brought you a beat up one but uh, he had this new in the box so I said oh, I'll take that and I can certainly speak to it. I've got lots of experience with these. Um, they come in so many different configurations, it's it's hard to keep track of. Uh, the M16 slash M21, to my knowledge, doesn't seem to define them. Uh, what would define the differences, for the most part, would be the last three digits in the bottle number. Um, if I get that to focus for you. There we go. So yeah, this is an M16 04Z or 04Z. Um, and I've actually seen some differences between what I can find online for this knife and what this knife actually has. It's supposed to be a uh, single carry position, which as you can see, it's uh, four position adjustable. Um, it may be just a different model year, different, uh, maybe I'm looking at old specs on, uh, on the website. Um, but yeah, th this has Oz 4 steel, Zytel handles, and as I said, these come in a large variety of different uh, setups. You can get these Sphere Point, Tanto Point, Oz 8 Steel, 8 CR 14 MOV, Aluminum Scales, uh, Desert Tan Scales, Brown Scales, Brown Coated Plaid, so many different options, it's, it's, it's hard to keep track of. Um, this one in particular is the flipper design. They're all flipper, but if you buy some of the higher end ones, um, you can get dual um, finger guards, in other words, a flipper and then an identical one on the other side. So when you open it up, it's, it's, uh, it covers both, both ends of your hands. Um, I myself have had a couple other models. Um, I've not owned this one specifically, but I own the M16-14SF, uh, um, which had the dual studs, aluminum handles, um, Oz 8 steel, rather than the Oz 4. And another thing I've noticed about it is these are not skeletonized. The liners are solid. But on my M16-14 SF, they were drilled. Uh, they had them milled out to match the aluminum scales. Uh, on this case, uh, the Zytel scales and the underneath liners, the, the scales are all that's, that's kind of uh, skeletonized. So, um, it's almost falsely skeletonized, I guess. But you can see that on the websites uh, when you go to look which one you're going to purchase. You can see whether they're actually milled out or not because you'll see uh, the blade and everything else underneath of it in the, in the ones that are. Uh, dual thumb studs. The thumb studs, they've got good traction on them. So you can use them to open it up, but it's not... It takes some, it takes some work. Uh, definitely, you're going to want to use the flipper. Uh, it's much easier to use. Um, 
another thing I noticed was on the tip up carry, sorry, tip down carry, on the more expensive blade, uh, the M16-14SF, which is the most expensive version of this knife, um, these holes, they rotated them down below the pivot point, so it carries much higher. I don't know why they did that. Uh, I'd have liked it if they had done it that way, but I carry tip up anyway, so not the end of the world, I guess. But anyway, um, this knife here in particular is about $65 Canadian. Uh, they range all the way up to $117 for the top of the line M16-14SF. Uh, that's with the aluminum scales and Oz8 steel. Uh, you can get them with serrated blades, non-serrated blades. The more expensive uh, 14-SF or 14SF comes with tri-point serrations. If you're going to go serrated, that's what I recommend. I also had a desert tan version with the VEF. V-E-F-F -F serrations, hated them. They chipped out so easily, it was ridiculous. Uh, I was cutting a plastic pop bottle. Um, it, they chipped from that. Anyway, the, on the flip side of that coin, CRKT replaced it for me without question. Um, so if you do run into that problem, they'll help you out. Um, that one specifically was 8CR14 MOV steel in the uh, tan version with the dual hilt. Um, but anyway, let's crack this bad boy open for you. They open nice and quick. This one in particular is the Tanto version. Nice blade. I like the profile on it. Um, I've seen some more aggressive Tanto um, corners or uh, edges, um, but this is definitely nice. Um, it's nice and, nice and thick to the tip. It's uh, Definitely reinforced. They've got a, a false swedge on the top here. A nice flat spot to put that on a uh, fixed angle uh, sharpener. This one in particular is three and three quarter inch blade length, nine and a quarter inch overall, um, which is pretty much the spec on all of the big versions of this knife. They also make one that's about half the thickness of the handle and a uh, much thinner blade. Uh, it's just small, nice little quick knife. This, I, I like this, this carries nice and, it carries low, but it's it's still beefy. Uh, this has the auto locks, which is this little tab here. So when it's not tuck, not hit, uh, when you're not push, pulling on that tab, you can't open the liner lock. Uh, and you could force it, I'm sure, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, so then when you pull that down, hold it down, as you can see, I'm still holding it down and then push the liner lock, it closes. Now, like I mentioned, the thumb studs, you can use them, but you've got this uh, flipper that's trying to hit your finger while you're doing it, and the thumb studs are pretty much your stop pin up here, front and back. As you can see, they run right into the side tail handles. Um, and that's what you have as a stop pin, so uh, as I look, there's nothing else in there. Now, I think this is a ball bearing pivot on this knife, uh, if I remember right. And they've got some jimping up top here. It's not bad. Uh, as far as the handle goes, you lock in pretty well with this finger choil, with the little flipper, and with the um, jimping on the top. It's not crazy aggressive, but it's decent. Um, just as a size comparison, I have my Manix 2XL here by Spyderco. Say the uh, as far as the cutting cutting uh, surface, CRKT's got it by a little bit, uh, a little more length in the handle as well. Uh, but overall length, it doesn't look that much different. I mean, probably a quarter inch in difference. But, uh, for grippiness, it, the the Manix 2XL has definitely got the uh, the edge on traction with all the jimping all over the thing and the G10 handles. But uh, Quite a price difference between those two as well. I think the Max 2 XL was 160 bucks, 170 bucks, uh, whereas this would have been 65. So um, you can't knock it for uh, for being close for sure. Um, let me see here. Flathead for for a pivot screw. That's uh, a little different. Used to seeing torques in there or something. Um, just an observation. One thing I can tell you um, is that. There are a few quality control issues 
and not with this one I'm holding in my hand. This one I'm holding in my hand seems fine, but when I picked this up yesterday from a friend of mine, uh, I grabbed the one he had in his pocket as well, and I was going to adjust the pocket clip for him on it like I did with this one. And this, these three holes, were not threaded properly. Couldn't get the, the screw started, and I, I didn't want to risk stripping anything on him, so he stayed tip up. I checked the other side, right here, you could see the liner right through these three holes. The liner hadn't been milled, there was no, or hadn't been tapped. Um, there was actually solid steel right below those three holes. So both sides of the knife to carry tip up, it was useless. I'd have had to drill it, tap it. I, you know, it's just not worth it for the time when he has one sitting right here that'll work. Now, chances are, if he was to send that back to CRKT, they'd fix it for him or send him a new knife because they're, uh, like I said, their warranty, I haven't noticed any problems with them. I've had multiple CRKTs I've had to send back. Now you can see that as good or bad, but the fact is their customer service is very good. Um, am I happy about having multiple CRKTs I had to send back? Well, no, probably not. But then again, it's not a Benchmade, it's not a Spyderco. Um, I would put it right up there with Kershaw and with... Uh, you know, maybe throw cold steel into that uh, category as well, that they are not putting top-notch materials into their knives, but they're building them well enough that they think they should hold up for you, and if they don't, they'll replace it. Um, so really, as a as a company you'd want to get behind, I, 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 would, I would jump in on that. I, I definitely don't see a problem um, with that. But one thing I'm just noticing right now and I'll have to look at his, well, I guess maybe I can tell you right now by closing it. Yeah, okay. Um, I had thought that that little, it's got a little blank there. It looks like it should be drilled for a lanyard hole or something. But it's just, uh, it's just a divot out of the liner, or sorry, out of the scale. But as I close it, I realize that uh, the blade would cut anything in there anyway. So they, they must not have meant that as as a place for a, uh, a lanyard. Um, maybe it was just supposed to be drilled fully through like these ones and kind of skeletonized. Um, but as you can see, the, the liner isn't skeletonized through it. So, uh, you know, actually there's another one right there that they didn't drill all the way through on. These are, that one's not. That one's not, that one there. So, unfortunately, uh, I guess I have to throw this in with the other one that uh, my friend's carrying in his pocket, that there are some quality control issues. They're just not polishing them off like they should. Uh, it doesn't feel rough. I mean, it, it doesn't feel cheap or chintzy. This is a, a beefy knife, guys, and it feels nice and heavy. Opens nice and quick with authority. It's one-handed use is very easy. Haven't had to frig with the uh, the pivot point on this one at all, but I'm definitely seeing some quality control issues. Um, I didn't notice any with mine, but this is two of this exact same model I've had in my hands in two days, and they both have some issues. Um, again, it's Columbia River Knife and Tool. They are, as far as I'm concerned, a good solid knife. Uh, I do have a fair bit of experience with them. Thankfully, they come with good warranty and does forgetting to finish off or having their machine that's, that's you know, uh, shaping these, maybe a bit broke or something and it didn't get all the way through. Um, do these make the knife less functional? No, it's cosmetic. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. Just take that with, uh, with a grain of salt. Maybe this is a new thing. Uh, I hope it's not a common problem with Columbia River Knife and Tool because uh, I've had good faith in them in the past. Um, I was actually thinking I'd like to buy another one of these. Uh, again, maybe the M16 14SF with the aluminum scales and such. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to think about it. I know they're going to back it if I do, so... Uh, it's not much of a risk, but uh, now that I've kind of dove into uh, Spyderco's and 
and uh, Benchmades and stuff like that. But then again, I've got a video up right now with a problem with my Benchmade Atomist. So none of these companies get away from problems. Uh, it, they're going to happen. Uh, the main thing is about how the handle uh, is about how the company is going to handle it for you. Um, that's what makes me decide whether I actually purchase that brand again or not. So, uh, in my experience, CRKT will handle it um, in good time. Uh, they're pretty quick to, uh, for turnaround, and they don't give you any trouble. So, uh, yeah, this is the M sixteen zero four. Z or Z, uh, Kit Carson, Columbia River Knife and Tool. Um,